If you are a battle royale junkie just like myself, I am here to beg the question on why you may not be playing the best battle royale that is currently out on the market. Over the past few weeks, I have been asking friends, fellow gamers, as well as my live stream on Twitch, what they look for in a battle royale and why they play the specific game that they play. So in this week's video, we're gonna be going over some of those things, some things that I look for and why you may not be playing what I consider the best battle royale in 2022. First, let me tell you why you should be watching this video and my experience inside the battle royale scene. I first started watching battle royales and first started watching Twitch with Dr. Disrespect and a lot of the big streamers when PUBG first came out. I was still on console at the time and I didn't have the means to get a PC and to play PUBG while there were still rumors coming out that PUBG would eventually come out on Xbox as an exclusive. Before that time came, Fortnite came out and as you know, took over the entire world. I got very, very heavily invested into Fortnite, started doing wagers and trying to compete in the in-game tournaments, won a little bit of money and actually did pretty well for myself. While still being on console PUBG on Xbox then came out and I dabbled in that a little bit but the game's performance wasn't the best itself I switched back to Fortnite and then thus comes the quarantine of 2020 as well as Call of Duty Warzone now I've been gaming pretty much my entire life it's always been a passion of mine but since 2020 and Call of Duty Warzone I pursued a full-time career in content creation and streaming so with a lot of people during quarantine they picked video games back up and got introduced to the scene of a battle royale before Warzone battle Battle Royales consisted of three things, land, loot, survive. While Warzone had a great take with loadouts and kind of skipping the entire looting section, it made other Battle Royales maybe feel less fluid. All you had to do in Warzone was win your drop, get 10,000, get your desired loadout, and go win the game. Where other games, like Fortnite, you can upgrade guns, and you're constantly looking for something better. And other Battle Royales, even like PUBG. Now there are a lot of games in this category, but I'm gonna focus on the big three, being Apex, Fortnite, and Warzone. So in 2022, what do we look for in a battle royale and what makes it stand out among the rest? This was the question that I was asking my stream as well as friends and gamers on what they try to find. And this is what the three things, and this is what I came up with with myself as well as the influence of other opinions. One being balance. Is the game balance itself? Firstly, does it run smooth? The items, the weapons, the everything. Is everything in perfect harmony in synchronization with each other? Whether you choose to be a long range player, a short range player, whatever, however game type that you feel you need to be in said game, is everything balanced? Warzone. No, but in all seriousness, balance is absolutely key to everything. We seem to be in some, some sort of weird trend in 2022 where games release early and they're not a complete product and it's in this constant beta state of ever evolving for better or for worse. So the key to a battle royale at its very core foundation is everything balanced. So we can look at the three games. Apex, balanced. Fortnite, balanced. Warzone, not balanced. Apex does a great job of making pretty much every single gun viable. Every single legend counteracts with each other, which is great. And while there are some annoyances and some things that I wish I could change in the game, overall, everything seems to be in synchronization with each other. Now, I haven't played Fortnite in a very long time, but I do watch it occasionally from time to time. The great thing about Fortnite is that whenever they do add or take away things, it's always replaced with something better, it seems like. Now we're on this zero build mode, which just seems to be the hype and the craze behind the title. People constantly use different guns. There are so many different items within that game and it makes it fun because you can run pretty much everything in that game well i know that the loot pool is probably the smallest out of the three titles you can still look at all the weapons and say all of these are viable we now talk about warzone the toughest thing about warzone is that it has the highest armory for players to use with three titles now inside of the game you have over 60 guns that you can play with but you are not going to run 55 of them because they are not viable. There's always going to be the best guns, whether it be the 301 inside of Apex, a pump shotgun inside of Fortnite, or even whatever AR or SMG is currently meta inside of the game. The balance 
will always come into play where can I run anything? Do I stand a chance if I run said weapon or said loadout? I know there's a lot of factors in this, but this definitely takes the L on Warzone for me on our first category of balance. The second category we're going to be going over today is going to be skill gap. I know that this word means a lot of different things and people have different desires for the, what they want within a skill gap in a game. When you're playing first person, third person shooters on a PVP level across thousands of people on the daily basis, or if you're a casual gamer who's just interested in picking up the game every now and again, at the end of the day, these games are competitive. You are trying to eliminate the other players without being eliminated. So this inherently breeds competition. So when we talk about a skill gap, I think there's a lot of negative connotations within this specific genre within gaming. Yes, there's toxicity and a lot of negative things to it, but at the end of the day, you're trying to gain the advantage however possible in any said game. So let's talk about skill gap within these three games and why it's important. When there is a skill gap inside of the game, it makes you feel that the more time you put in, the better that you are getting. We're gonna start with Fortnite with the skill gap category, and I just wanna say off the bat, that prior to the zero building mode this game does have the highest skill gap now as i stated before i did play fortnite semi-competitively i wasn't a pro by any means but i definitely try to get myself mixed into the ranked and competitive scene this game with not only having to shoot but also build and simultaneously switch between the two is incredibly difficult not only are you having to build up but drop down and go through edits and also trying to hit your headshots within fighting. Fortnite absolutely has one of the highest skill gaps that I've ever played. Now that's for better or for worse. If you are heavily invested into the game, this is one of the most rewarding games that you can get on. There's nothing quite like going into a build fight, having a long fight, and end up coming out on top with all of the loot. Now I haven't played the zero build mode, but I do see that there are mobility mechanics in there, and I'm excited to try that eventually. But as of right now, this definitely holds the title. Now this is a game that is hard to get into and understand because there is so much to it, and because the game and the competitive level has significantly changed since its release. It would be hard for somebody to jump into this as a bare bone person, coming fresh off of another game, but I do think that anybody could play this game and should definitely try it because this game actually is very very fun now let's talk about apex legends and its skill gap within the three games i do feel like apex is in the sweet spot the perfect sweet spot i would say for any sort of casual gamer new gamer as well as experience and a mastery level type gaming as well so let me explain that as i stated with fortnite that it, i do feel like it is hard to get into now at this point because it is super sweaty the zero building probably makes it a little bit more casual, but at the end of the day, Fortnite is known for its building and the capabilities that you want with that game. Apex still being a first person shooter at heart, it does have an extra layer of skill gap. That being that the weapons are a little bit harder to control. There are difficult recoil patterns within the game. And when you still try to learn the guns, you also have to learn the legends, but that's a fun experience. I did play Apex way back in the day when it first came out and it was still on console. And when I came back to Apex at the beginning of 2022, there were so many things that I had to learn. New guns, new heroes, abilities changing from old heroes, and etc. I can genuinely tell you that Apex rewards better plays. And sometimes that sucks because I make a lot of stupid plays. But Apex is the perfect balance of being able to have fun, learn different things, and have an entirely different side of the game that genuinely takes a lot of skill, decision making, and patience to learn. From the movement system, to team compositions, and knowing how, when, and where to take a fight is insane. Over these last three months, I've not only switched games, but I've also switched from controller to mouse and keyboard. And this has been an amazing experience, but also a frustrating one. I've wanted Warzone to have a competitive ladder for the longest time now, and it still hasn't came. So it's nice coming to a game that I only runs smoothly, but I can enjoy casually, and majority of the time, take it competitively. I genuinely feel this has helped me as a shooter in general when I go to other games. And I highly, highly recommend just to try it. I know it's very hard for a lot of people listening to this right now. You probably are coming from Warzone. But trust me when I say that this game makes every other first person shooter battle royale right now look terrible. Let's talk about Warzone and its skill gap. Now it does have one mechanic within the game, slide canceling, that does take a little bit of skill to use in the right way. Breaking cameras, 1v4s, 1v3s, a lot of those 
are due to being able to outmaneuver somebody in fights. But on the other hand as well, a lot of it is positioning and hitting your shots. And because a lot of these guns are super easy to use, shots are easy to hit, so it comes down to game sense and positioning within if you're a solo trying to do solo quads if you're a quad quad whatever it may be positioning is everything in this game so unfortunately this is another l for warzone because there's not a big skill gap to this game now i just want to say that i know a lot of players are casual gamers they're still on console they still only play two or three days a week for a couple hours and i totally understand that that's the appeal behind call of duty there's nothing fantasy related to it it's military it's easy just to turn on pick up and play and i totally understand that and maybe that's not the people that i'm trying to talk to but what i do know when i'm on youtube i'm trying to learn how to get better when i'm on other people's streams i'm trying Trying to learn how to get better and this is what it comes down to when i first want to talk about skill gap is that you always are trying to get better and you want a game that allows you to feel like you are getting better and that when you put the time and the effort in that that's rewarded this last category for what makes a good br is how you play the game in ways that you can play it while the overall objective again is to drop loot and survive and win how you get to that point should have some options. We'll make this quick so I can get into the verdict and why, but from when you drop and how you get to end game, if there are different ways that you can do that is super fun. Fortnite, whether you wanna get a vehicle that you need to get gas for, or you need to hit a spot that has PVE to upgrade weapons or an upgrading station, hitting different transportation items, going to different hot areas that have different loot and different things to do with inside of them. Fortnite has a very creative way on how you go from drop to end game. Apex is a little bit different on how they enhance to the main objective. Crafting, new smart bins coming out in season 13, and how your team composition reacts with the map on the four different maps on how to rotate, get your loadout, and trying to take a power position within the map. Well, if you have defensive or offensive legends matters on where you decide to set up shop on the map, and how you interact with other teams so then warzone we do have contracts which is awesome i did feel like with warzone when i was playing it full time that the only thing you needed to do was drop get 10,000, buy uav buy loadout and get a bounty i know there's a lot of rebirth players out there as well to me that was not something that i was favorable for but to each their own when you're trying to get to that end game, if nothing feels like it matters, it's probably not a good BR. What I mean is how you take fights, if you should take a fight, when to pull back, and how to get to that point of winning the game is the overall objective. If you are freely allowed to go wipe an entire lobby with no repercussions, that's something interesting within a game. But what I've enjoyed about Apex versus Warzone is that you actually have to think. Warzone doesn't give you a chance to think because all it is is reaction time. And I would argue Fortnite also makes you think as well. So without further ado, let me tell you why you should be playing this game. <laughs> As you probably guessed, Apex Legends, absolutely the best BR in 2022 with the mechanics that you need to learn within the game for movement is absolutely insane. The different gameplay styles, the armory, and how you have to learn every single weapon and get good with that weapon is incredibly satisfying. The different maps, the pacings, competitive arenas, as well as pubs are all very, very refreshing. And the key to the game is definitely the legends. A lot of the lore behind it is a lot of fun to get into, but most importantly, how that interacts on top of just a natural FPS battle royale is crazy. Learning how those legends interact with each other and the learning curve within everything and, and genuinely feeling that over the last three months, how much I have improved, not only mechanically, but also in decision-making and game awareness, which is what this game rewards ultimately so give it a try i'm a huge advocate this is not sponsored thank you guys for watching sticking with me listen to me talk for the last 15 minutes i love you i appreciate you if you like the video like it for me make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on all socials at chad rails we're live almost every single day on twitch i would love to have you there have a blessed sunday